Transcript of videotaped recording of Zach's first meeting with Dr. Curtis at Clearwater State Hospital at Greenville. Dr. Curtis, you know you're here at Clearwater State Hospital, right? Zach nods. Dr. Curtis, smiling. This is a safe place. Our main job here is to make sure you're safe, okay? Yeah, I saw Pulp Fiction, Frosty says. I ask, are you guys going to shoot us like they did in that movie? Stormy laughs, but it's a mean laugh, and he says, just you, pal. Frosty gives Stormy a shove and quickly says to me, no, he's just messing with you. We don't want to shoot anybody if we can help it, but like I said before, we've got an announcement, so listen up. Frosty pauses for a second until we're all looking at him. Even though I usually can't figure out social cues, I'm guessing by looking at everyone's faces that I should stay quiet again. Frosty says, we're trying to figure out some way to get out of this mess. We can't think of any way yet. We don't want to hurt any of you, but we're not going to go to jail, and right now you're the only thing keeping us from that. So we're all going to have to just sit tight for a while until we figure out how we can work a deal. The skinny suit, who hasn't said a single word until now, suddenly says, It's not fair. His voice is real whiny. Frosty looks at him and says, No shit, Sherlock, but that's the way it is. The old lady with the purple-pink hair sitting closest to me, who smells so nice, speaks up. You're going to have to face the music sometime, you know. That's the way it is, too. She sounds real strict and mean. Her voice is old, too. It sounds like a squeaky door. But she smells so nice. I close my eyes and breathe in her scent. If I don't look at her, at all her wrinkles and stuff, once she stops talking and I just smell her, I imagine she's a beautiful girl and that Wong Gong... Wong Gong, happy long, long dong. Shut up, I say. The old lady looks at me now. She looks pissed. I say to her, I wasn't talking to you, lady. I don't like her much, even if she does smell nice. Frosty lifts his hand, the one with the gun, up to his mouth, but I can tell he's grinning. Maybe he doesn't like pissed off old ladies either. I hear a real loud crackle sound. It's coming from the cops outside again. A second later, there's a voice, and it's got that real scratchy sound of coming through a broken stereo speaker. I can't make out what they're saying, but I hear hostage situation, 10-4, affirmative. It's just like a cop movie. Cops and robbers. Robber snobber, Wong Gong, Long Long. I'm hearing that a lot more now, and that's not good. I wonder when I'm going to get my medicine. Frosty and Stormy are looking at the door, listening to all the noise coming from out front. Across the room, I notice the guy who works here at the coffee shop sneaking toward one of the shelves near where he sits. I look where he's moving and see what he's doing. On the bottom shelf, under some white tablecloths, is a big knife. I watch the guy slowly reach up toward the handle. Get your hand off that, Stormy yells. The store guy freezes, but looks mad too. He just stares at Stormy. Then Stormy says, I mean it, man. Get your hand away from that knife. He shoves his gun right up against the guy's head. Frosty goes over to them and points his gun at the store guy. Frosty says, what the fuck do you think you're doing? With Frosty's gun pointed at the coffee shop guy, Stormy takes his gun away from the guy's head. The coffee shop guy's face is bright red and his lips quiver. He moves his hand off the knife but spits out, fuck you. Blam! The sound in this little room is the loudest thing I've ever heard. The blam goes blam, 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 like an echo through my skull, and then I hear a real high-pitched ringing. The old ladies lift their hands to cover their ears. The fat suit grabs his chest like a, his heart's going to explode. The skinny suit begins to shake. I think right away about Pulp Fiction. Who's been shot? Stormy almost drops his gun. He stares at it like it's something, some weird alien thing. Jesus, Joey, Frosty yells at Stormy. I think, who's Joey? Stormy yells back at Frosty. I didn't mean it. It just went off. Just went off, Frosty says. Are you crazy? He looks around at us all. It, is everybody okay? The little girl has wet her pants. Actually, her dress. At first, I wonder if her mom will rub her nose in the pee, but her mother hugs her close and says, It's all right, Katie. You're all right. Damn, Frosty says. I didn't mean to, Stormy says again. His voice sounds shaky, like he might start crying. He holds the gun at his side, and his shoulders are droopy. Frosty says to him, It's okay, man. Nobody's hurt. He looks around at all of us again and asks, Nobody's hurt, right? 
Everybody says no except for the mom and the little girl who don't say anything. Stormy looks at the little girl who peed her dress, then asks the waitress who works at the coffee shop, is there a restroom back here? The waitress girl grabs a waste bag basket next to where she sits and throws up into it. Shit, Frosty says. The guy who tried to grab the knife puts his arm over the girl's shoulder and yells at Frosty, asshole. Frosty points his gun at the guy and yells, fuck you, you had to go be a big hero. Frosty hurries over and grabs the big knife off the shelf and throws it out the doorway into the main room of the coffee shop. A phone sitting on the desk right next to me rings. I pick it up and say, hello? Frosty yells at me, hang that up. The man on the phone yells, what's happened in there? So I answered, the little girl peed her dress. You shot her for that, the voice yells. I answered, no. Hang up, Frosty yells again. That was a gunshot, wasn't it? It just went off, I say. Frosty points his gun at me. The man on the phone asks, you shot her by accident? She's not shot. We heard a shot. Just when I see where the bullet from Stormy's gun went. The desk is shot, I say. Who? The desk is shot right through the drawer. I look at Frosty, and he cocks his gun, pointing at my head. Listen, son, the cop says, sounding calmer. You need to throw your weapon out and just come out of there before somebody gets hurt. Wong, gong, gong, wong. Why does he think I have a weapon? How can I throw it out if I don't have it? Throw it out. Throw up. Throw rug. Frosty's coming towards me. Are you still there, son? The voice asks, interrupting my thoughts. I say once more, the desk got shot. I gotta go now. I hang up the phone. Frosty stops and stands there, staring at me. I'm wondering whether I should have said, have a nice day, before I hung up. But now I notice that everybody is staring, and they're all dead quiet. Did you have a nice chat? Frosty asks. I don't know. I was wondering whether I should have said, Frosty interrupts, yelling, what the fuck did you... Why the fuck did you pick up the phone? I say, it was ringing. Frosty asks, did you really think it was for you? The second he says this, I remember my mom. I look at my watch. It's 3.57. Wow, I say, my mom's waiting for me. I need my medicine. I gotta go now. I start to stand up, but Frosty and Stormy jerk up their guns and point them at me. Frosty says, you're not going anywhere. What's your name? I look at their guns and sit back down. Zachary McDaniel Watts said. Zachary, Frosty says. Zach, I say. Not wasteoid, okay? Okay, Frosty says. Zach, not wasteoid. You got it. Listen, Zach, if the phone rings again, it's not you, your mom and it's not for you, so leave it alone, okay? I say, sure, Frosty, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not really sorry, but people usually stop being mad at me whenever I say it. Frosty says, just don't do it again. Suddenly, there's the loud sound of footsteps running on the roof. Everybody in the room looks up, as if we could look through the ceiling. Stormy says to Frosty, Cops? Frosty answers, No, Rudolph and Blitzen, and Shitson and Santa, too. Of course, cops. Christ! The footsteps get louder. Even though I can see that Frosty doesn't want me to say anything more, I can't stop myself. The bad guys with the guns in, pulp, in the Pulp Fiction movie shoot a lot of people. Frosty is still looking up at the ceiling, but he says, Yeah, they do. They sure do. He keeps looking up, but he asks, Have you ever shot anybody, Zach? I shake my head no, but I don't tell him I almost did. Me. Frosty, still staring at the ceiling, says, I haven't shot anybody either, Zach. He pauses a second and looks around at all of us sitting here. But there's always a first time.